Scott, can you believe we're at the ESC in Paris finally and the Paragon results have come out. I think, can you summarize it for us? Very exciting times, Carolyn. So um, in Paragon, we, we, we really wanted to test whether Sucubitril Valsartan, which we had previously shown in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, would reduce uh, heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular death, um, whether we could do uh, the same in patients with heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. There has been no evidence-based therapy for this huge group of patients with a very large unmet need. Indeed, and if I could expand on that, I mean, we were going into this with the first positive phase two trial in HEFPEF that I know of, of a drug therapy, your Paramount trial. That's so there was a lot of anticipation for this. That's true, and um, I think we uh, use the results of Paramount to design this trial to identify the right patients. We chose patients who had uh, evidence of, uh, of heart failure, structural heart disease, natriuretic peptide elevation, and um, we, we tested this hypothesis and the results were fascinating. I think they were, but maybe before even going there, maybe to mention the uniqueness of the endpoint and why it's so important to patients with HEFPEF. Well, patients with HEFPEF, um, uh, they, they are hospitalized for heart failure almost at the same rate as patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, but um, they don't die yeah. to the same extent. They, yeah. their, their overall mortality is much lower and they tend to die of other things besides cardiovascular uh, reasons. So we thought that uh, to really fully capture the total burden of disease in this population, we would use a recurrent events method, which allowed us to uh, look at all heart failure hospitalizations, um, as well as including cardiovascular death in yeah. there as well. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a very unique point of, of uh, Paragon stuff that we've learned a lot. And then let's just get it out of the way. Why compare to Valsartan, an active comparator, instead of placebo? So unlike prior HEFPEF trials, this was an active comparator trial uh, using Valsartan. And the reason we did it is, be is not because Valsartan or any other angiotensin receptor blocker is standard of care in these exactly. patients, but because uh, the vast majority of patients with HEFPEF are already on inhibitors of the renin angiotensin system. 87% in Paragon were on these drugs. So I don't think we could have asked doctors to discontinue RAS blockers in order to do this trial uh, uh, compared to placebo. Right, right. Um, so maybe summarize the interesting results. You know I'm gonna ask you some more after that. <laughs> well, you know, um, overall, we saw a 13% reduction in heart failure hospitalizations and cardiovascular death. This just barely missed statistical significance. We had a p-value of 0 0.059. Um, so yes, we were disappointed in that, but we had several secondary endpoints that went um, uh, clearly suggested benefit in patients receiving scubitril valsartan. So we improved New York Heart Association class in more patients and fewer patients had worsening of New York Heart Association class in the Sacubitril Valsartan arm. Uh, we saw improvement in the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire. Uh, a greater proportion of patients had five or more point improvement in the case to CQ in the Sacubitril Valsartan, clinically meaningful improvement. And we saw a 50% reduction in worsening renal failure, defined as um, uh, reaching end stage renal disease, renal death, or 50% decline in GFR. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. And these secondary outcomes are stuff that's really important to the patient's quality of life and so on. But then also, I mean, that renal endpoint, I think is something we're gonna have to look more into, isn't it? Yeah, so the yeah, totality absolutely. of the evidence, I like the way you presented it. I mean, just missed. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about the thing that's buzzing all around, the, the interaction analyses. Yeah, so when we look uh, at these trials in general, we always pre-specify subgroups of patients. I mean, we, we talk a lot about personalized medicine, and the fact is that not all medicines work the same way in everybody. Most of the time what we're looking for is consistency, but in Paragon, we noticed that there were two particular groups 
in which the treatment effect was much greater than others. One of them is women. We saw a 27% reduction in that primary composite in women, highly significant. And the other one is patients with ejection fraction that is at or below our median of 57%. So that was half of our patients with ejection fraction that is sort of at or below what we would call the normal range uh, derived 22% reduction in the primary composite outcome. And this really suggests that there are people who would benefit from Secubitril Valsartan um, based on these results. Right, right. Let's take that, that second interaction first, you know, the ejection fraction, because first of all, I suppose we have to talk about our illegitimate child. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're referring to heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction, which you and I did coined. Did I say that live? <laughs> you did, Carolyn, but it's okay. Yeah, uh, and we talked about the 40 to 50% range of ejection fraction and what to do about that. And, you know, data have emerged that these are probably more like mildly reduced ejection fraction. They seem to respond to ARBs and charm preserve in to MRAs and top cat, similarly to reduce ejection fraction. It seems that we're seeing a similar pattern oh, here, you agree? We are. In comparison um, to Paradigm? Yeah, Maybe we, give some we, numbers we, to the we, NFTs and things. We absolutely are. In yeah. fact, um, we know that these patients have systolic dysfunction, and uh, we saw in Charm, we saw in, yeah. in, in top cat, uh, potential benefit in those patients. Um, but you know, in Paragon, what we see is a 22% relative risk reduction in the patients with an ejection fraction of 57% overall or, or below. Yeah. Um, when we think about that in terms of absolute risk reduction, it is virtually identical to the absolute risk reduction that we saw in the paradigm, in paradigm trial yes, with heart failure numbers. with reduced ejection fraction. So I That's think there huge. is clinically meaningful benefit in this range of patients for which we had no prior therapy. Yeah, and uh, which we probably still don't know what to name at the moment. We but may not. Well, okay, so moving on to now the, the, the stickier but hotter, sexier topic of sex. <laughs> Again, did I say that out loud? But anyway, do, do explain. I mean, we've always known that ejection fractions should be higher in women than men, especially with aging and remodeling. And so, you know, what, what is this that we're seeing? Did you see a shift perhaps in the, the ejection fraction at which women appear to benefit more? Um, we, we actually did. And in fact, um, I don't know why the women in our trial behave differently than the men. Carol and I have been trying to figure out the differences between men and women for a long time. Uh, and I'm not sure I'm going to quite figure it out yet, but we're going we're gonna to look into this. As you suggest, um, women, when they get older especially, and with heart failure preserved ejection fraction, tend to have higher ejection fractions than men. Normal might be different in men and women. Exactly. And what we believe is happening here, and these data will come out at future meetings, is that women are deriving benefit at a much higher ejection, ejection fraction. fraction. Yeah, wow, lots to discuss, and I suppose um, some parts of it are already getting a bit, uh, <laughs> I don't know whether they're gonna censor us here anymore. So anyway, I'm just so glad that we were able to chat about Paragon and dig a little bit deeper. Thanks, Thanks so Scott. Much.